हेलो लोकेश आ रही है हेलो आ, मुझे तो आ रही है सर आपकी आवाज लोकेश अभी आ रही है आपको लाइव स्ट्रीम पे बस हेलो हेलो ओके राहुल सर वी आर ऑल सेट वी कैन गो वी आर लाइव ओके श्योर हेलो लोकेश आ रही है आवाज हेलो मुझे तो आ रही है सर आपकी आवाज लोकेश अभी आ रही है आपको लाइव स्ट्रीम पे बस हेलो हेलो ओके राहुल सर वी आर ऑल सेट वी कैन गो वी आर लाइव ओके श्योर Okay, am I audible to everyone who joined on Zoom? Yes. Okay, so we will wait for two more minutes. Uh, actually, students are joining, so then we will start discussion regarding this particular thing, uh, fall admission in US twenty twenty four. So let's wait for two more minutes. Okay. okay so by that time i will just explain you like what i am going to discuss in today's meeting so we will discuss about uh, opportunities if you are doing higher study from euro uh, us and uh, we will discuss about other things like if you want to come for masters and phd what are the requirement what are the deadlines what are uh, documents which you need what are the tests which you have to give whether the tests are mandatory because many students are asking question whether gre is compulsory or uh, uh, toefl ielts which one they have to give so i will discuss about all this next thing is scholarship so scholarships are available for both phd as well as master students uh master student sometimes they will not get the scholarship but i will discuss little bit about what are the kind of scholarship which are available for master students and then what about phd if you are coming to phd you have to arrange your own scholarship or university is going to give you scholarship so i will discuss these things in details and in the very last i will tell you about strategy and uh, like whatever time you have right now it's june so Uh, for fall semester december is a deadline most of the universities have deadline in december so how you can utilize this 6 7 months this is what we are going to discuss in today's meeting okay so yeah just let me check whether students are joined okay so yeah i think we are good to go so first of all before i start about these things let me quickly introduce myself so my name is rahul uh i think most of you if you are following yourpedia you might have seen my videos before but 
uh, my name is rahul so i have done my masters from iit kanpur i was in mechanical engineering department so i did my masters from here in 2018 then i worked in this particular company caterpillar so i worked in chennai i worked in bangalore for 3 years so i uh, stay with only one company so i was working in r&d of this caterpillar so caterpillar is us based mnc is dealing with the heavy machinery so i was just handling one of the team in r&d of this particular company then in 2021 i started my phd from this particular university this is in new jersey uh, east coast of usa so this is in new jersey university name is rutgers university so currently i am a second year phd student over here i am do doing my phd in additive manufacturing uh, again mechanical engineering department so yeah this is little bit about me and i associated with yourpedia since uh, last 3 years so i will be one of your mentor if you are going with yourpedia education so yeah this is little bit about me so we can come to actual discussion like what i want to discuss in this particular meeting so yeah before i start i just want to brief about some students like there are many students who got selections from yourpedia within last 2 years uh, but these six students are my favorite students because uh, they have something special in their profile so this guy prashant he got fully funded phd in usa what is special in his case he uh, did not write any gre exam or toefl exam he got admission fully funded phd in university of north dakota without gre exam and without toefl exam so those student who uh, have this doubt whether it is possible to get uh, phds or masters in usa without gre without toefl yes it is possible this is the example uh second is christina so why her case is special because she was not from iit or nit she never did his uh, her bachelors or masters from iit or nit still she got fully funded phd in usa what is the key she sent lot of emails which i am going to discuss if you want phd you actually uh, have to send lot of emails i'm going to discuss about these things so you got some replies from the professor she did the same thing uh, even if she did her masters from a, a state university in tamil nadu but uh, she did a good project and she sent email to professors so some of the professors replied back she applied in that university and got fully funded phd in usa uh, next case is of pratiba so <laughs> pratiba why her case is special because she tried in usa once and she got rejection from seven to eight universities then she come to yourpedia we suggested her to basically improve her profile she joined csir in chandigarh she uh, worked on one project for 6 month on the basis of that project she sent some emails to the professor and finally she got fully funded phd so you can always uh, improve your profile through some certification courses through some research work which you can do in iits nits or uh, uh, organizations like csir so that's why like her case is very very special so these three uh, students they are from phd and uh, yeah like they can give you answer whether it is possible without iit nit without gre toefl yes it's possible and uh, no matter like how is how was your mtech project you can always improve your profile and uh, you can secure good phd position there are a lot of other examples but these three are special next case is for masters so those who think if i am from uh, private college or if i am from tier 3 college whether i can go to top 20 colleges for masters my answer is yes a3 is the example he went to university of south california which is very very good college in california and recently there is one another student who got admit in ucla that is like ivy league college so uh, if you if you ask me whether from tier 3 college you can go to top 20 colleges in the world i would say yes in us it is possible he is example similarly gitartha he got very very good offer he got offer from rice university wisconsin medicine columbia university so uh, 
key for her, uh, his profile is basically SOP and CV. How you are making your SOP and CV that is very very important. So Gitar Gitar wrote very very good SOP and uh, he got offer from Ivy League colleges. So that is all again possible if uh, you are well aware about the process. And last case for bachelor student who are basically dreaming to come to US. So this girl, Amisha, she got direct PhD. Uh, she tried for master's also. So before joining the Yorpedia, she doesn't know about direct PhD option. So there is, I think a lot of students doesn't know about this thing. There is an option called direct PhD. Uh, so here, what you have to do, you can directly grow, go from bachelor's to PhD. So why this is good option? Because direct PhD is always fully funded. You don't have to spend any money. If you are coming for masters in USA, so you have to spend 40 to 45 lakh. But for direct PhD, there is no cost. Instead, you will get scholarship monthly, $2,000 or $3,000. You will get scholarships. So some students might ask, like, I'm not interested in PhD. Why should I go for direct PhD? I would say get admission in direct PhD. After two years, if you are not interested in PhD, you can convert that into master's and you can go uh, like you can get graduated and you can start your job in industry. So in this way, you can uh, target fully funded masters, I would say, through direct PhD. And PhD is also a very good option, which I'm going to explain in the next slides. What are the job opportunities and all? But yeah, like before actually start this session, I want to tell you about these six success stories, which are very, very important and it's very motivating. So students who keep trying, who apply in uh, US, who send a lot of emails, they generally get selection. That is my observation uh, since last two years. So yeah, with this, first of all, I would discuss about why higher studies from uh, USA. So I will give you uh, two, three points. Okay. The first thing is branding slash job role. So what happened like when I did my master's, I, I did from IIT Kanpur. Us time pe, I don't have much information about abroad. So I was not knowing ki kya kya opportunities rehti hai in abroad, especially in USA. But now I came for PhD. I explored this thing. So master students have a very, very good opportunities in abroad. Even if you have to pay fee fees there like 40 to 45 lakh you have to take the loan but after your graduation you will get a uh, very very good jobs so uh, how it make difference so i will tell you this thing first thing is branding and job role so job role is very very important thing uh when i joined caterpillar i joined it from india okay so us time pe kya hota hai ki? if you join some mnc from its home country or from the other country. So CAT for CAT, uh, home country is US and I joined it from India. So when you are in India, even if you are uh, from IIT, I was, uh, I was graduated from IIT Kanpur, even if uh, they don't give you very good job roles from India. So what my job role was, there was one person who's sitting in USA and he generally tell us like this type of uh, simulation you have to run and you just have to make a presentation. They will, they will never tell you like why you are doing this, what is the actual problem in the uh, basically machine which is going on. So persons who joined uh, this type of companies from USA, they will al always get this type of good job roles where they have some decision making power. But people who are joining from India or China, they just support these particular people. So in India and China, even if they are saying like it is R&D job, but actually it is a support center. So people join from India, they are actually supporting US people. Okay, for this particular company, if you're going to other companies like Germany based Mercedes and Benz, you are always supporting that people who are sitting in Germany. You are just doing some analysis for them. So uh, as you grow in your life, I mean, initially two, three years, uh, my salary was very, very good at in India compared to other mechanical engineers. But after two, three years, jobs are getting very uh, boring. Basically, you are doing same type of things for these people and they will never tell you like why you are doing this, what's the actually actual thing going on in the machine. But same, uh, same time, I observed people who went to US and they joined the CAD from USA. 
they have very good job roles. They are actually going to the plant. They will check what is going on in the machine. And uh, later on, after two, three years of experience, they will hire people in India and China and uh, they start taking work out of them. So that is what I want to tell you from my experience, because this thing you will never understand after doing uh, like before doing two or three years of jobs in India, you will never understand this thing. But later on, you will realize, OK, job roles are very boring and uh, you are not getting decision making powers. So this is the one thing why you should go to US and join some corporate from there. OK, and obviously, second thing is salary. Uh, I know like some students, they have uh, some family problem. They have to move back to India. But even uh, then also, I always suggest go to US, do your master's and do at least two to three years of your job. OK, in some corporate because salaries are very high. Conversion rate is very, very high. So you will get financial stable if you move back to India after uh, three, four years of job. You are financially stable. If you earn in dollars and you are moving back to India, it is a very good thing. Uh, after uh, basically four or five years, you are financially very stable. So even in that case, salaries are very very high in US and uh, other countries. So I always suggest you to get some experience from abroad. Okay. So if you ask me, what are the job opportunities? If you are from, uh, if you are doing masters from a USA. One thing, always have a job in corporate. Another thing, you can return back to India and join the corporate. You are treated like an IITN. So what happens in India, if you do master from tier three college or tier two college, not from IIT and IIT, generally you work in same industry, but your salaries are comparatively very, very less. But if you are not somehow able to get good gate score, move to abroad, go to US, do your master from there, recover your money whatever you spend on the loan after three four years of job you can always move back to india and in india you will be treated like an iitns you will get same uh, pay grade whatever iitns are getting so this is another good opportunity if you want to move back to india go to abroad do some studies if you if you are not getting opportunities in iit so i would always recommend this thing third thing branding which i am saying if you do a uh, master's from, I would say, NITs or IITs, okay, even if from India, you are doing master's from there, it is very, very difficult to go to top 20 universities. If your research project is very good, then yeah, chances are there. But uh, sometimes in uh, moving in top 20 universities like MIT, Stanford, it is difficult. So I would say go to US, do your MS from some uh, normal ranking university i would say 30 to 50 ranking university then chances are very very high if you are interested in phd after doing masters you can move to top 20 universities so this is the thing which is helpful in your career if you even if you want to do phd okay so these are for uh, masters people what opportunities are there for phds the PhDs can always work in corporate after completion of their PhD, which that option is not there in India because you are always overqualified for corporates if you have PhD degree. But in US, uh, this option is always uh, open. Why? Because in US, corporate has different job roles for you. In India, it is different. The same scenario I explained you in the beginning, what I faced during my corporate job. Because when you are in India, you have to work for someone who is sitting in US. So they don't need PhD students in that job roles. But if you are joining from a USA, they will give you responsibility. So that's why generally they hire PhD students in corporate after PhD in USA. Another option you have, you can work in research labs like we have ISRO, DRDO in India. In US also, you have these type of research labs. You can always join that. You can work as a professor in some US university. This option is always available. Uh, you have to put some efforts. You have to do uh, write some publications in your PhD, but this option is open for you. And PhD students, generally, they move back to India. They don't join corporate, but they join IITs, NITs, these type of college for professorship. So these are the options for PhD students which are available. And if you ask me, what are the average salaries? Uh, in US, this is for masters. If you are doing masters in core, 
mechanical material civil industrial and you are not putting much effort you are not going towards machine learning ai not going towards data science then these are the salaries which you will get after masters and if you are doing masters in cs or you are like your project is interdisciplinary you have some experience in ai data analytics ml so this is the starting salary for you so just after your graduation you will get between 120 to 150k per annum depends on your skill like how you are presenting yourself how rigorously you uh, basically find jobs and if you ask about phds here phds are valued more if you are from these core department your starting salary will be 130 to 150k per annum but in us nobody is working on the core things right now everybody is moving towards uh, uh, ml ai even if uh, you are from any department like mechanical material everybody is working on ml ai and if you have that skills you are on this side like 200 to 240k per annum uh, this is what you will get salaries are very very high for after doing phd so doing phd from usa is a very good option it is challenging you have some challenges in that but it's a very good option salaries are very high after that okay uh now if you are basically targeting us uh, phd or masters so first of all what is the duration for masters generally students will complete in one and a half to two and a half years so those who are doing masters by coursework that is called m eng in usa so uh, they will complete their masters in one and a half year and six months generally they do internship okay so this is one thing and another thing with masters is like you can do it with thesis if you are interested in phd generally uh, students will do thesis in their master so that is called ms ms by thesis okay so it is it has different name uh, some people call it as ms by thesis ms by research and uh, some uh, some colleges call m eng as ms by coursework so it has different name okay but like there are two type of masters this is very very easy uh, you just have to do the subject six month internship you are done this is challenging challenging in the sense uh, you have to do research you have to do one project generally you have to work with some phd student but good thing is you will get funding for this one so most of the universities they will waive off your fee and they will give you month they start giving you monthly stipend so this is very good opportunity uh, ms by thesis okay and later on if you want to go to phd this is very good basically ms by thesis what you have to do but if you are interested on the job you don't want to uh, uh, you don't want to challenge yourself i would say ms by a course work or m eng is very good course if you are going to corporate both the courses are equal like same uh, nobody is going to ask whether you do whether you did thesis or not so it is treated as same okay and phd what happen like if you have masters degree and you are going towards phd duration is 4 year if you have uh, if you are direct phd after bachelors it will take 5 years so this is the duration for phd uh, next thing is test requirement so generally what happen uh, you have to write two exams one is gre other one is either toefl or ielts in us both are valid okay so mostly students wrote toefl exam but ielts is equally acceptable and it is comparatively easier than toefl so i suggest to go for these two exams okay but if you want to write toefl it's up to you uh, but one thing which i want to mention here Uh, these exams these are basically uh, very very important for uh, <clears throat> ms and direct phd students so you have to write if you ask me whether gre is mandatory whether i should write or not i, I will say uh, if you are going for masters you should write gre if you are going for direct phd you should write both of these exams but if you have masters degree or you have some sort of research experience in your bachelors sometimes these exams can be waived off uh yeah so in the very beginning i told you about this particular guy prashant he got fully funded phd without any of the exam 
but there is one thing in that one tricky thing is when he applied that was the covid period okay so during covid mostly universities waived off these exams they are saying like okay if you have profile you can directly come but now scenario has changed because uh, uh, now test centers are reopened uh, gre has home edition toefl has home edition so now universities are not saying this thing they are saying you have to write this exam but still you can get waiver for this exam still there are some universities where these exams are not required you can tell me like this is a university where it is written gre is not required i would say yes but 90% universities will tell you gre is required okay still it can be waived off how it can be waived off if you have good research profile this exam can be waived off then in that case mostly this happens for phd student uh if they have good profile in masters they can directly approach some professors and uh, professors basically will tell them okay uh if you have good profile i don't need gre score because gre is there just to check your aptitude okay if you have good research uh, experience in your masters or i would say in bachelors and somehow you have some publication also then professor will tell you okay gre is not required we can get uh, we can give you waiver for this exam okay but for masters and direct phd student these exams are required if you ask me how much score is required for masters and direct phd try to get 320 okay and if you are going for phd and in some university this exam is uh, basically mandatory then again score is not uh, very high score is not required if you get 305 38 310 10, everything is fine for gre if you are going for phd everything is fine just you have to write the exam and don't get below 300 because then they will not accept your application above 300 everything is fine for phd but for masters and direct phd this score has some uh, value like you need to touch this mark even if you are close like you are 317 316 then also it's fine okay uh, i'll give you time in the last to ask me question then i will answer all your question if you have any query uh, yeah this is about test requirement next thing uh, admissions so there are two sessions one is fall other one is spring okay i think you might heard about this thing but uh, uh, this is very similar to india fall and spring so in india we call fall as summer semester spring as winter semester okay so what happens summer semester generally classes will start in the month of august okay and for winter semester it starts in the month of january so same thing for fall and spring also classes will start in the august classes will start every year in the january so these are the two semesters only naming is different fall and spring but it is like summer and winter but one thing which is different if you want to target august okay let us say august 2024 you want to start your masters or phd in august 24 when you have to apply you have to apply previous year 15 december this is the deadline for most of the universities not all but for the most of the university 15 december is the deadline for most of the university even if you are going to start next year august okay and spring if you are going to start in january 24 what is the deadline for you 15 september of previous year 15 september so upcoming session for you is spring but you have very less time and for masters uh, there are less vacancies in the spring phd it is same both the semesters are same you can try in fall and spring both but for masters opportunity is less as they are in india also like there are less seats in winter session but uh, deadline is 15 september but if you want to target the main then i would say 15 december keep this deadline in your mind this is what you have to target it varies it varies university to university if you are going towards iv league then deadline may be 1 december not before than 1 december so 1 december is the earliest for iv league universities then 15 december then some universities have deadline in january february march it depends okay so this is about deadlines you have to keep these dates in your mind because this is very helpful to plan your strategy what you have to do next okay uh yeah next thing which is very very important which i think is very very important 
uh, that is the documents. So in India, if you want admission, uh, maybe in MS or PhD, generally there is personal interview. Professor, you have to go for the interview. Professor will ask you question and all. In US, it is not like that. Getting admission is easy in US, okay? But uh, what thing is different? In India, if you're going for PhD, they will not pay much attention to your CV. They will not pay much attention to your SOP. But in US, this is very, very important documents. Okay, so your admission depends on that. Uh, GRE score, it matters for master's people, but for PhD, this is the most important document. Okay, so this is CV. This is not your job CV, this is academic CV. So what is there in that? It is basically of two to three pages, first of all. It is not one page CV. It is two to three pages. Uh, average length is three page, okay? What thing is very, very important? First of all, formatting. Okay, your, your PhD admission uh, purely depends on CV. Even like if you are uh, applying for ma uh, funded masters, then it depends on CV, like how you are developing your CV. So this is like two to three page CV where you have to write each and every uh, each and every information very, very clearly. Formatting is very important. Like how you're organizing your CV is very important. Which thing you have to put on the top, which thing you have to put on the uh, bottom. My next slide is related to that. So I will come back to this CV part again, like which is good CV and which one is bad CV. I will uh, give you an idea, but formatting and how you are organizing your information is very important. And academic CV is different from your job CV. Here you have to write about your relevant coursework also. You have to write about your research experience, which you are not writing in your job CV. Job CV, nobody cares what research you did, what courses you did. But when you are applying for master's and PhD, this has significance, okay? So first thing is CV, second thing is SOP. So one thing is uh, SOP is not important for those students who have master's degree, okay? And those who are not applying in Ivy League, like MIT Stanford, if you are not applying, then SOP has less significance. But if you are applying for master's program, if you are applying for direct PhD program, and if you are applying in top 20 universities, for PhD, even if you have master's degree, if you're applying in top 20 university, then SOP has a very high weightage. You have to write your SOP very, very well. So what you have to check in that, for, uh, first thing is your SOP should complement with your CV. So what does that mean? If in your CV something is bad, like you have very less marks in one of the semester and it is reflecting in your transcript, so you have to prove that thing in your SOP, like why you got less marks in that and what you did to improve. So this is that one thing. Second thing is story. You have to make a story from the very beginning. If I'm a mechanical engineer, I have to tell them like why I chose mechanical engineering. I can't tell them like some uncle suggested me to uh, basically go for mechanical engineering or mechanical is evergreen. I can't tell like that. I have to tell them why I chose mechanical engineering, then what I did in my bachelor's, uh, what coursework I did, what extracurricular I did, internship, what internships I did in uh, bachelor's, then why you are interested in direct PhD, not uh, PhD after master's, and uh, why you are interested in, if you're going for master's, why master's in this particular college. So you can't say this has good ranking, that's why I'm coming here. You always have to tell them like, this has good coursework that aligns with my research interests. This university has good research facilities, good labs. These type of things you have to always tell. So SOP is very, very important if you're going in these particular universities and you have to make story. So first thing like story, if you are going for PhD in MIT, why, why like they will select you? So you have to prove that, okay? So generally how people do that, uh, first of all, they will make a story. I did masters. I worked in this particular company. And in this particular company, I observed this thing, which is not happening good. Then I talked to many uh, senior uh, researchers in that particular company. They told me like this thing is not developed. Then I found a research gap. 
and i think i can fill that research gap so that's why i want to do phd in that particular research area so this is how you have to make a story and uh, grammatically it should be very very correct so they will check two three things one thing is your grammar other thing is your content and third thing is it should complement with your cv if something is not good in your cv prove that thing in sop and don't use chat gpt or don't uh, uh, tell your senior to write your sop blindly always put your personal experience in your sop that is called a good sop if you don't put your personal experience then uh, like grad committee in that particular university they will catch you they will know like okay chat gpt is there this student is writing very general sop so he took someone's help so always when somebody joins jorpedia we always tell them to write first draft just to get your experience whatever you want to mention just put your experience uh, don't worry about grammar and all in the very first go it will take some time to write sops and all uh, so yeah later on you can improve the grammar you can uh, improve the flow of the story but write your personal experience that is very very important apart from these two documents you need lors three lors are required okay uh, if you are going to europe also these lors are required but in us mostly three are required so what is this lor this is letter of recommendation uh, so you basically have to uh, get some lor references from professors or if you are working somewhere you can get it from your uh, company or uh, if you did some internship you can get your internship supervisor any person under whom you worked you can get lors okay three are required in us and last thing transcripts not your degree transcripts are required so uh, like if you are pursuing your masters or bachelor let us say you are in seventh semester in the month of december you are in seventh semester or you are in third semester of your masters okay so still you can apply for us uh whatever transcript up to that point you have you can just submit that degree is not required that's why even if when you are pursuing your masters you can still apply for phd or if if you are pursuing bachelors you can still apply for masters don't wait like once i graduated then only i will apply it is not required you can basically during your uh, studies also you can apply for us okay so yeah these these things are about documents which you need i was talking about cv so these things are very very important because in us there is no personal interview they will just check your cv and uh, sop so i compare these two cvs okay this is bad cv first of all like many students they get some format from uh, uh, like google and they try to put all the information in one page they will make one page cv uh this is not uh, academic cv this is your job cv where you are putting everything in one page okay and why i'm saying it is bad for example if i'm a professor i'm opening your cv i'm not getting any information if you're writing i did i'm tech in this environmental engineering from this college in 2070 what is your cgpa i want to know like whether you are a good student or bad student i want to know about your cgpa which is missing here okay then he is writing about experience he is writing csir durgapur i worked here as project jrf person who is sitting in us he doesn't know what is csir durgapur okay he is not mentioning like uh, uh, what project he did over there what actually skill he acquired from there he just writing the skills over there but not giving any proof where he learned that okay so this is the example of bad cv if i'm saying i know autocad i know python programming how did you know like did you do any project on that particular thing that's why you know about that or you are just randomly writing so if you send this type of cv to some professor even if you did very good project but you will get the rejections you might think like your profile is not good but actually your cv is not good but let's see about uh, this cv so here like first thing whenever somebody open this type of cv he will directly come to this thing okay this student uh, graduated from this college this was cgp he got professor got the information then what is his research interest what course work he did and uh, if i am saying i have this uh, research experience so i am 
prove uh, i am give pro i am giving proof for that like i did master thesis on this particular project i did these three like this is the description of my project i used this software in that particular project so in the end if i am writing i have this software skill then i am giving proof for that so this is the example of good cv academic cv which you have to develop generally people without guidance they don't know about these particular things that's why they get lot of rejections sometimes they are not getting replies from the professors so this is what i am talking about good documents similarly sop also play important role how you are writing the sop but cv is very important document okay yeah uh, now i am coming towards life of a, a masters and phd student in usa so one thing which is very very important like how can i get the money how can i take my expenditure uh, finally like how much you have to uh, basically expand on this particular process so if you are coming for masters yes you have to take loan if you are not getting scholarship some students got fully funded masters that opportunity is there but if you did not get then you have to take loan of 40 to 45 lakh initially uh, that covers your tuition fee and uh, you can recover the money how you can recover you can do part time jobs on campus so weekly 20 hours and people uh, students start doing part time jobs on campus in us you can't work off campus legally you can't work illegally many people many students are working but legally you can't work uh yeah so earning like this much you can earn from part time jobs on an average you can earn more also and uh, yes so there is fall semester there is spring semester and in between there is summer semester of 3 months okay generally students do internship in these particular 3 semesters they are getting very good uh, salary in these internships and if they work well then instead of part time jobs they will continue their uh, internships till the time they are getting graduate and benefit of this internship is most of the students get pre placement offer letters uh, if they are doing internship in one particular company they will get pre placement offer from that particular company so yeah full time jobs generally master student they will get 6.5 to 10000 dollar per month this is the salary and this is pretty high in us uh, you can live a very good lavish life in this particular money and other thing like if you do masters very well plan masters very well you can go to top 20 universities uh, in the world for phd if you are interested in phd also you can come back to india if you want your pay skills in the very beginning i told you pay skills like you will be treated like iitians no matter from which universities in uh, which from which university in usa you graduated but you will be treated like a iitian in india okay so this is the uh, for masters people and for phd uh, first of all there is no tuition fee everything will be paid by university you don't have to pay that so your expenditure not, uh, like you don't have to expend anything on your phd studies instead you will get monthly stipend depends on the city so 2000 to 3000 dollar per month uh, yeah you can do internship also just like masters people you will get paid here also there also and full time jobs uh, in the very beginning i told you phds are very highly paid in us so in india generally people struggle for jobs but in us uh, they are very highly paid if you are doing phd you can work in corporate you can work in research labs you can work as a professor in universities and you can go for post doctorate also in top 20 universities after your phd so the scholarship this 2000 to 3000 a master student can also get that okay if they plan very well so they will give you scholarship in the form of ta where you have to teach a bachelor's class you will get the scholarship in the form of ra where you have to do research under some professor and uh, you will get paid for that sometimes you will get ga also graduate assistantship so this basically this is for master student where you have to help department in some clerical job and you will your tuition fee will be paid off you uh, you will get monthly stipends also if your profile is very very good you will get fellowships for example there is there are lot of fellowship for asian students there are fellowships for uh, 
uh, women basically you can always apply for that fellowships so in fellowship you don't have to do nothing you will get money so fellowships are best but you need a very good profile for that so this is how master student generally got paid master than phd student so <clears throat> if you want teaching assistantship you are going for masters you have to send some emails uh, emails to the department for teaching assistantship let us say you got admission in purdue as soon as you got the offer letter start sending email to the grad committee of that particular college and ask whether tas are available if there is availability of ta through your email they will uh, give you that particular thing for research assistantship you have to email the professor <clears throat> you have to show the interest like okay uh, this is your lab i'm pretty much interested in the project whether you have any vacancy professor generally hire master students also for uh, as a ra and uh, professor start paying your fee he will give start giving you monthly stipend also so just you can send emails so these two things will work through email this thing generally start from second semester of masters if you are not getting any of the scholarship just in the first semester talk to people in your department and uh, start asking whether they have graduate assistantship so you will get that and fellowship uh, you have to apply separately for fellowship so yeah these type of emails which you have to send uh, professors so when i was applying for phd i sent same type of email this is my email only so uh, if i have some experience in particular research area i found a professor in purdue university who is working in the same research area i sent him email sent attach my cv and uh, he responded me back thank you for your inquiry your area of interest background fits my research program uh, blah 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 when i get an open position i'll certainly take your case into consideration so if 15 december is the deadline i start sending these type of emails by september okay so you have to send these things to the professor even if you are master student you want fully funded master so this is very long email long and professional email you have to write you have to give description about yourself your previous research background and uh, they will start sending you replies okay uh, yes now final part like if you are planning to go to usa what you have to do so first of all gre exam i recommend you to write this uh, if you are in masters and uh, you want to go for direct phd uh, uh like if you want to go for masters or direct phd this exam is compulsory if you have mtech degree or you have some research experience in bachelors then this exam can be waived off but i would say uh, go for this exam because your scope will open score doesn't matter that much uh, so if you are getting 310 315 in gre it is okay so you can take 3 to 3 and 1/2 months now it is like june so you can write gre up to august and or september mid so this is what you have to plan and the second thing toefl or ielts uh, i would say go for ielts because it is easier it will take 15 20 days or one month most probably so in the month of october you have to write this exam uh yeah november one month spare it for sops or sometimes you have to write more essays like diversity essay Uh, you have to write these two. You have to prepare the documents. So, so you can do that in the November, and mostly 15 December or 1st December is the deadline. So apply as soon as possible because sometimes it is first come first serve. I am saying so. Uh, like for example, a professor who has a PhD vacancy, if you want to uh, apply, just send him email. Uh, sometimes what happen like many students sending him email from india china iran egypt so generally international students will come from there so many students are sending uh, emails those who send initially professor generally reply him first so it is first come first serve i would say start sending email as soon as possible yeah so if you want fully funded masters or phd this is the thing which you have to parallelly do during the uh, from the very beginning like develop a cv it will take one week maximum to make a cv then start sending emails to the professor here trickier part is how to find professor who are working in the same research area if you are interested in phd or funded masters masters by research 
So that is where uh, your PDA is going to help you. Uh, we will help you in GRE and uh, these exams, TOEFL, IELTS, so live classes are going on. But where we are different is this thing, uh, shortlist the professors, 100 to 120 professors who are of your interest. For example, you have done masters in particular research area, how to find professor in that particular uh, research area in USA. So that is where your PDA will help you. Then how to write emails, what to attach in that. These things generally, uh, we will help you in that. Uh, SOP writing, essay writing, motivation letter writing, and uh, CV. CV is very, very important. How to make your CV, how to organize the information. This thing, your PDA will always help you. Uh, sometimes professor will ask you for research proposal. Uh, what is research proposal? Like whatever you want to do in PhD, they will ask you, first of all, make a proposal, send it to them, how to write that. Your PDA will help you in that. And the final thing is, uh, this is mostly for funded masters and PhD students. There is one interview that is 30 minute interview. It is mostly it is not technical. It is non-tech or they will check your communication skills or sometimes they will ask you to present something like your M-Tech project. So we will help you in that, how to crack that interviews. Okay, but it is not that, uh, that rigorous as it happens in India. So your PDA has four modules. One module where we are doing everything by ourselves, like premium module and uh, three modules. One is guidance module, one is guidance plus exam preparation module, and one is only exam preparation module. Okay. So yes, so in your PDF, these are your mentors. So generally we are PhD or master students in different universities of the world. So I am in USA currently. Uh, Ankit, he takes care of master's student and he's in Canada right now. Uh, Dr. Kapil and Dr. Gurpreet, they are in UK doing post-doctorate over there. Saurabh, he's our mentor from NTU Singapore. And uh, Sanyam, he's from Norway, NTNU Norway. Uh, Jyoti and Swapnil, they are again in US. Uh, they help in US admissions and this guy is from IIT. Uh, these are our uh, team. This is our team. and. Uh, yeah, like uh, last two years, it's been very good. Students are going to top 20 universities. They got fully funded masters, fully funded PhDs. And uh, yes, so yeah, final suggestion from my side before I end this thing. So if you're going for masters, don't go for QS ranking because mostly students compare the QS ranking and uh, uh, they find universities like that. But I suggest you always have to check where industries related to your research area or related to your department, where are the industrial hub. For example, if you're from mechanical, you have to target mid US. Okay, mid US, there are a lot of mechanical uh, engineering companies. So if you go to low QS rank university, but it is nearer to this thing, industrial hub, you will always get good internship opportunities okay so if you somehow good internship you will get very good placement offer later later on you will get pre-placement offer later on so how to find this industrial hub generally you can read it on quora you can talk to people on linkedin who are doing master or you can connect with any of the your pedia mentor uh yeah and if you are going for phd in phd again don't uh target the highest qs strength universities always target the professor, good professors, who, who are good professors. So always check the alumni of that particular research group. If they are going in very, very good jobs, uh, they are going in teaching also, they are going in corporates. So that is the professor which is good. So always target that. The US works very differently than India. In India, if you're from IITs, you will get very good salaries, very good job opportunities. But US and other developed nations, that are different. University ranking, maybe it is not good, but if professor is good, then you will get uh, very good job opportunities, okay? Yeah, in PhD, supervisor behavior is very, very important. You can always talk to the current member of that research group. If supervisor is toxic, then uh, sometimes your PhD is very bad. So you can always talk to the current members. 
and uh, always check the funding scenarios with the supervisor sometimes what happen your phd is of four year but professor has funding for one year only so he will leave you in between so don't just uh, get caught in that scenario and you have plan earlier for your career like what you want to do after phd plan within one or two years of your phd if you want to go to academia or you want to go to corporate what you have you have to do different things in that case so yeah this is final suggestion from me and uh, now i am open to q and a uh, i can answer the question uh, to the people who are on zoom and if you are on youtube i can still see your question in the chat box so you can just type in the chat box and uh, for more information regarding the services uh, or anything if you want to connect with our mentor you can just scan this barcode and just type hi to our executive she will get uh, give a reply very soon so i am open to question if you have any question just let me know yes hello uh, good evening sir uh one by one by one i will take okay pali your question i will take first okay, yes go evening, ahead sir, how are you? good i am good how are you yeah i am fine sir thank you sir actually i am doing a uh, robotic semtech by research from iit mandi currently and today mm -hmm. only my uh, first semester is being completed here uh, and actually i am aiming for phd in top uh, universities in usa so how, and mm -hmm. my course will be completed i think by 2025 or maybe first months of 2026 so in this mm -hmm. regard how would i start preparing myself from now on so that i can land it up in a very uh, good university with good uh, like scholarship and all those okay things. so if you are done with your first year i think your course work will be over now you are actually into the research part first semester so okay first semester so i think like uh, when you are doing your research project okay in robotics uh when you are reading some research paper while doing the literature review when you are doing some uh, reading then find the professors find the corresponding author of that particular publication and check where those professors are try to be in contact with that uh, through emails or you can attend some conferences first of all you have to make a map like whatever project you are doing whosoever sitting in us like what, uh, where where this particular research is going on so you have to make an excel sheet by the end of third semester you are very very clear okay on my project these are the people in us who are working on this particular things and once you are uh, just give me a minute <laughs> yeah so once you are done with this thing then what you have to do you uh, you can plan for gre as well because uh, you have some time in the third semester so i would say in third semester plan for gre and uh, once you are done with gre start sending lot of emails to different professors you will get an idea like where to apply so finally take chance in only in those universities where you are getting replies okay and after completion what are the salary aspect can i expect if i do like ai phd on the computer vision or robotics i already gave you an idea it uh, if you are doing phd in ai or ml then you start your career with 200 to 230k something in between this range you will start your career so this is the salary 230000 to 2 uh, 200 to 230000 uh, dollars per annum this is the salary range this with respect to current uh, currency exchange rate right mm -hmm. uh, yeah uh, don't worry about the current scenario that is uh, mostly for manufacturing people and who, those who are graduating just now within like one and a half to two years scenario will be improved again many many jobs uh, will be open so if i completed my phd from now onwards it will take almost 5 to 6 years so then it will be more as per their, that, that time the scenario would be right yes 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 and it will not take 5 to 6 year it will take 3 and 1/2 to 4 years in us if you have masters degree okay 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 sir thank you so much mm -hmm. yes who is next uh good evening sir my name is krishna yadav yeah my yes, name is krishna, krishna. yadav mm -hmm. hello sir how are you sir good good how are you i am fine sir thank you Sir, I have done my B Tech in mechanical engineering from an IIT Mizoram. 
2022 batch last year i have passed mm-hmm. out and mm-hmm. i am gold medalist of my batch uh, my mm-hmm. cgpa is 8.85 okay. so am i eligible for direct phd yes so anybody who has cgpa more than 8 and uh, some things depends on your uh, uh, gre score also so if your cgp is a above 8 you can target for direct phd that is one thing but i suggest uh, then second thing is your research experience sort out your interest first of all where you want to do phd if you are mechanical engineering whether you want to go to cft or design side or manufacturing side try to do some certification courses or if possible try to do one or two research project in that particular domain i would say 90% chances if you do any research project with 8.85 cgpa krishna and uh, i suggest you to write gre also so with these three things 90% chances you will get direct phd chances are very high if your cgpa above 8 chances are very very high okay sir actually sir my btech project is not that much good and mm-hmm. uh, i am working currently in larsen and dubro construction where i am working in planning so i think it's not like uh, something hmm. linked with my branch if you um, think gre uh, sorry this project is not good then spend some effort on uh, gre gre and certification courses certification courses like coursera nowadays very uh, many many websites are there skill link is there coursera uh, then edx uh, something like that you can do certification courses in the particular research area then in your sop you can write i have this much expertise and i want to explore this area i am very sure like people will get uh, this direct phd with the credential whatever you have and sir for uh, sop writing like uh, i am mm-hmm. doing job in planning where like i am doing currently completely civil job actually not linked mm-hmm. with my mechanical branch so means i need to write sop in which i need to link my job with my project which it is project. it is not mandatory if you have different in my case also when i was working my job role was completely different from my mtech project and whatever i am doing now my job role was completely different to itna farak nahi hoga uska whatever you did in your job just mention that thing in your sop just as a part but if it is not related to phd don't explain it very much just mention i did this particular work because job experience has different significance people will understand if you did job you are professional your communication skills are good you are disciplined so these type of things generally they will uh, check if you have a job experience so even if it is different that is fine because you are just bachelors so uh yeah it is fine not a problem krishna sir one last question i have sir mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. sir uh, gre and tofl is required only in usa or everywhere in like other countries also like canada china russia uh, gre all. is required on the in usa and singapore but singapore will give you option to give gate score also instead of gre so canada gre is not required europe gre is not required australia not required new zealand not required and But what about tofl sir tofl and ilts out of these two you have to give one exam everywhere in the world some universities will give you admission in europe some universities will give you admission without this exam but when you are going for visa they will catch you sometimes they will reject your visa so i suggest if you are not going to us then write only ilts that is more than sufficient and if you are coming to usa write both i would suggest oh, thank you sir thank you for clearing my all doubts mhm uh, okay next question i have some question in the chat box uh, i will read that good evening i am randeep kumar completed my mtech in water engineering okay from central university of jharkhand and research area is ground water hydrology what is the chances to get admission uh because i thought 2020 to 2022 is gap so gap doesn't matter but uh, chances of getting admission it uh, if you have master degree you have some research experience it purely depends on how many professors you shortlist in that particular research area and how many emails you send okay 
So some students, they send like five, 10 emails. They will get three, four positive reply. Their work is done. Those people are mostly from IITs, okay? Uh, those who are from private colleges, they have to send some 50, 60 emails or sometimes 100 of emails. Then they start getting replies from the professor. So it depends how you're making your CV. If you have publication, it is a plus point uh, in your research experience, but mostly it depends on how much, pro, uh, how many professors you shortlist and how many emails you send. Okay. Uh, next question, what is certification courses? I already answered that. Which CGPA is required for PhD? Mostly master's, if you have master's degree, that CGPA requires most, uh, but it, it is very subjective. Some professors, they will check your BTEC CGPA also, but mostly they will check only master's. Uh, they check your coursework actually, ki what courses you did, what graduate level courses you already did. Uh, how Yorpedia help in getting education loan uh, if financial condition is weak? So right now Yorpedia is not helping anybody in educational loan, but we can suggest you some banks where you can get the educational loan, but uh, we are not explicitly uh, dealing with that. Okay. Any other question from your side? Hello, I... Hello. Yes. Yes. Deepak, I can start with you. Uh, sir, actually, I have some questions. Uh, mm -hmm. That is, sir, I want to do masters from abroad, but uh, sir, my my background is mechanical, and I want to do my masters in data science related field. So, mm -hmm. sir, is it possible to change is, my field and shift field? Yes. It is pretty much possible. Many students from mechanical, civil, they are moving toward data science. So, data science is possible. Many. Uh, Universities have uh, uh, this thing basically interdisciplinary course in data science, or you can move to industrial engineering department. There, uh, you can uh, do this data science related work. Okay, okay, sir. And sir, I uh, actually I have uh, talked to one bank manager about education loan. So he was telling that uh, you have to give some thing security. Uh, which is uh, like mm -hmm. your home home uh, mm -hmm. home means paper or uh, any liquidity. So, sir, yes. uh, if someone's condition is not like that, mm -hmm. sir, how can you can get education loan? Uh, there are some other agencies also which will give you loan without of any security or something like that, but they will give you. Uh, you have to pay more interest rate. You can just Google it out. There are some agencies which will pay you loan without this thing, without any security and all. Okay, or try for funded masters, funded masters and PhD. Okay. So yeah. Uh, one good. last question, uh, sir. Is it possible for that uh, I can shift my branch to data science in Germany, country, uh, Germany country? Anywhere it is possible. Germany also it is possible. Many students are doing like this. So while writing your SOP, you just have to make some link why you want to do data in data science. So any country will accept you that. Target industrial engineering department. Uh, many uh, students are doing data science related projects over there. Okay. Thank you. Yes. No problem. I have another question from Prem Kumar. Can you mute? Hello, sir. Yeah. Uh, just a minute. I'll take one question from the chat box. I got a question from Prem Kumar. Certain publications and journal communication take certain time and how can we represent that uh, in CV and in what, ma what manner? Uh, the same for patent provisional review also. Can you share? Okay, so there are two ways, Prem Kumar. One thing is you can just the name, uh, mention the name of publication on your CV and in the last, just write in the bracket submitted or under review. Professors will consider that because they also know it will take time. If you submitted the publication, you can just write in the brackets, it is under review. So it will work. They will give you a credit for that. Other thing, uh, you know about if you know about this preprint archive, so you can just uh, put your paper in the archive and uh, they will give you preprint. Uh, 
that preprint has some reference you can always uh, uh, always put that in your publication section so just search about arxiv that is the cornell university journal which will give you preprint about your publication just check about that they will give you uh, they will publish your article uh, they will like put your article online and they will give you some reference number which you can put in your cv okay so these are the two ways in which you can do what a somebody is asking ravi kumar he's asking what if i have a gap of one year after master it doesn't matter i had a gap of three years after my master it doesn't affect your phd so you can uh one year is fine basically it doesn't matter uh, so okay. uh, uh hello sir i am ravin patel as you uh, uh told my question mm -hmm. i am audible sir yes yes you are audible. so uh yes sir i have a one year gap i did my masters of engineering in uh, 2021 september month in electrical discipline but after after that i had a gap so uh, if uh, it is uh, mandatory to just uh, justify or uh, present any uh, experience late experience uh, later or anything sir uh if like i till now i heard only from one student who uh, was saying like due to gap he got a rejection but that from ivy league university mit stanford but other than that uh, there are many universities where one year gap is fine they just check your this thing particular uh, your mtech project and uh, what uh, previous profile you have one year gap is fine or you can put some this thing like uh, you did some uh, uh some volunteer work something like that you can do that or you can put some fake certificate of teaching these things you can always do but i would say one year is fine uh, yes sir and uh, second question is like uh, uh, if i mention my uh, internship in uh, cv but actually i have a not a particular certificate of that particular internship so i have to just uh, submit uh, while uh, interview uh in future for phd or uh, it's uh, not mandatory to present certificate it's just if you mention intensive so if i am <laughs> able to justify so that's uh, okay sir uh agar tum mere se puch raha hai sir my experience i never submitted any of the certificates whatever experience i mentioned to maine kabhi wo kahi university mein nahi aise lagaya kuch ki na certificate but during your visa interview you have to bring all the certificates because uh, uh sometimes visa officer will ask you ki tumne yahan pe job kari hai to certificate kahan hai then at that time you have to show but other than that university never asks that is like uh, next story first of all get the admit and for that certificates are not required but i would suggest don't uh, put some fake uh, this thing experience and all fake experience if you are putting then uh, you should have proper certificate with yourself okay but if you ask me ki university mein wo required hai then i would say no it is not required and sir uh, like i i not did uh, my masters in nit or uh, iit so uh, mm -hmm. after that i have a chance for phd in usa or uh, i think uh, i showed uh, you in the very chance? beginning in the very beginning i showed you like uh, people have chance but there are two things if you are trying for phd you should have something in your profile if you are not from iit and it you should have some good research experience but it is not like ki mere paas research experience bhi nahi hai main kisi aur research area mein karna chahta hu phd mere paas gre score bhi nahi hai then i would say there are no chances but research experience is good okay you are not from iit and it chances are there many students from your pedia got fully funded phd in that way in usa i'm talking about so but they have something in their profile their project is good and uh, most of them have publications also okay hello, yeah so hello hello sir uh, sir this is a uh, uh, student uh, sivam uh, yes, this sir. is a student for uh, phd admission so my okay. question is uh, like uh, if one was is doing phd from singapore like ndus or ntu and uh, other one is doing from uh, usa uh, what do mm -hmm. you mention 
So what is the mm-hmm. main difference between those? Like from your say, difference is never uh, as compared to university. Difference is not there. Ki agar tum IIT se bhi karte ho, I mean, some students they are doing very good projects in IITs. Okay, difference always will come. when you go into the job market ek bar phd ho gaya what career options you have in india there are only two 90% student are going for post doctorate jobs hi nahi hai over qualified for uh, jobs in corporate to wahan pe difference aayega hamesha and uh, a similar thing ki us economy is very strong if you are doing same project in india and same project in us you will get more opportunity from us other thing agar tumhe professor banna hai iit mein aake you want to become professor in some iit same project you do from iit and go and say tell them like i want to become professor in iit they will never accept you but if same thing you are doing from us or germany you go back and you will say i want to become professor in iit they will hire you so branding job market this is the difference which you will get singapore branding is very good but job market is not that much good as compared to us but still i would say if you are getting opportunity in ntu and us uh, grab that okay sir, uh, one more question yeah. sir so uh-huh. like sir, uh, right now i have option to uh, uh, join isc bangalore for my mm-hmm. phd uh, mm-hmm. so uh, should i join that institute for a phd or wait for 6 months or one year for uh, this uh, you say join iisc and start uh, do this thing parallelly basically a broad admission but when you are joining iisc for phd remove everything from your linkedin account or never mention that thing in your cv ki you are doing phd and uh, because if you are doing phd somewhere and you are sending email they will never accept you because in us scenario is different because here professor has to give funding to the student from their own pocket so generally if you tell them like i am doing phd and i want to change research group they will never appreciate that they will tell they, because they know it is very hard for a professor to uh, arrange the funding they don't know like in india it is coming from mhrt they don't know this thing so i would suggest start your phd in isc and parallelly uh, explore opportunities in abroad and remove everything from your linkedin and all so after okay. like uh, if i pursue uh, phd from here then uh, uh, after like 6 month i got opportunity from there like you see mm-hmm. or something mm-hmm. so yeah, i can leave this institute is it possible mm. to leave this PhD? yes 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 so uh, last year also some students said that they are doing from iit bombay so they spent one year there in iit bombay and uh, they left i would say till one and half year it is fine if you are between 0 to 1 and 1 and half year period you can leave and start a new phd but if you are above one and half then i would say complete the phd from iisc and uh, explore for post doctorate in abroad so this is my suggestion thank you sir hi sir okay. hello Uh, so I think there are a lot of questions, but I have limited time, so I have more ten minutes, ten more minutes. So yeah, go ahead. Who is talking? Pranav. Pranav. Yes. Sir, so I'm from civil engineering background, having nine point mm-hmm. five CGPA. Sir, so mm-hmm. I'm bachelor or masters? So masters. Okay. Uh, I am not sure about direct PhD and masters, but after listening to the direct PhD, my mind is also telling to. Uh, explore direct PhD. So my question is, uh, uh, can I ask for waiving of my GRE uh, for masters? No, no, no. Tell me, like you are currently doing bachelor's or masters? So I have completed my bachelor's. I'm uh, oh, to do masters. Okay. Go for direct PhD, and I suggest you to write GRE because uh, you have very good CGPA, and chances are very high. i don't know whether you have any research profile or something like that if you don't have go for gre try to score some good marks 320 around gre score if you somehow you get around 320 with this cgpa pranav you will surely get the direct phd and after joining direct phd just decide whether you want to go with masters or phd i would say phd is better option but if you want to do masters then leave it in between Uh, my yes, suggestion is write gre i always suggest everyone to write gre because 
thing is like that if you have 100 universities with GRE you can apply in that 100 universities but if you don't have only 10 15 universities are there where you have to take chances already it is very competitive and you are reducing your scope so it is true some students will get without GRE but uh, I always suggest you to go with GRE okay Mr. Uh, living publications I have uh... Everything in my profile. So I mm -hmm. asked this question. If you have publication, you can directly connect with professors. And uh, sometimes, yeah, they will tell you no GRE. So you can get admission without GRE also. If you have publication, then you have other things very, very good. So I would not say in every university they will give you waiver, but mostly they can give waiver for GRE. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sir, I'm already a student of your I will be contacting you in other classes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Sure, no problem. Thank you. I have one question in chat box from Durga Sai. Uh, I have graduated last year bachelor's in mechanical CGP 7.16, around eight backlogs during my BTEC. I don't have good internship, but I have a good decent project. Okay. And the work is not that kind of protein. Is it worth? Has to go for masters to have chance to get top colleges. You have chance of getting masters. Eight backlogs. I mean, like one student had same profile. He had eight backlogs. He got very very good university, but the thing is, he did very very good internships. So Durga, I uh, I would say you can try for masters but what you will get i am not very sure at that time we have a different mentor for a master student he will tell you after going through your cv like what you can target if you ask me top 20 colleges mit stanford i would say it's not it's not possible you can get something in masters i am very sure okay but which type of college that depends on your cv and profile once you can discuss with our mentor who's dealing with masters admission Okay, uh, one last question I can take. Any one of you, if you want to ask any question, last question. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Yes. Uh, sir, I actually, I'm a, I'm ju I've just graduated from my manufacturing engineering degree. I got a CGP of 8.1. I'm from NIFT Ranchi, and mm -hmm. I wanted to pursue masters in industrial engineering or supply chain domain mm -hmm. uh, so as you said that we should target the main areas of us mm -hmm. so can you name some what are the main areas any universities in the michigan uh cincinnati uh like like this university michigan state michigan tech these type of universities they are near to that particular industrial hub so yeah you can target these uh and uh, other like california texas any university if, uh, that is near to that is there in that particular states you can target those okay so okay. sir I, i'm also a student of but your why you want to go in uh, this thing uh, i mean supply chain why supply chain why not mechanical uh, so i uh, I did internships and certification courses during my bachelor's. I did one research mm -hmm. internship from IIT BHU and certification courses from Coursera. I mm -hmm. got interested in this field. And mm -hmm. my job, which I'm going to join from next month, it is in the same operations management department. Okay. Yeah, then you are fine. You can target these particular industry, like wherever industries are there. Read on Quora, you will get a lot of articles like where actual industrial engineering people should go. But I suggest Texas, California, Michigan, Indiana, uh, these these particular states. These are very good. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay, then I think uh, that's it. That's what I want to discuss with you guys. So thank you very much for joining the session. And I wish you all the very best for your future. I hope like you already scanned this barcode. If you have more questions, you can always uh, connect with our executive. She will connect with your uh, with our respective mentors.
so thank you so much and uh, have a very good night thank you thank you sir good night thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir bye thank you sir good night